My goal in 2024 is to make 10 to 20K in revenue every single month. And this is my Q2 income report. This is the second video I've made in this series. The first one was the Q1 income report and you can pause the screen if you wanna take a look at what happened in the previous quarter. So really quick context for those of you who are new to my videos. I have been self-employed for five years. My goal is to build multiple income streams, which yes, I have been doing, but I think I wanna grow it even more and you'll see I want to make the amount more too. And I'm trying to do a lot of things, honestly. So my growth, is a little bit hindered by me trying to do all the things, but I do like the variety and I really do believe that as a creative, you can do all the things and thrive, but it just might take a little bit longer. And I think that is the case for me. Also, I put quotes around income because there are some things that are not true business income, but to me, uh, it's like I get the cash anyway. So for me, I do consider it, it's like money that Dina gets to spend. So for me, that is income, but I will at the end show you what was my actual business income after I've subtracted all the random things, like I had a tax return that came and so I have some extra cash from that. The biggest income stream I had was course slash coaching income and I made $8,632 from that. Now, where did that come from and why did I not separate it, separate like the course from the coaching? It's a little bit difficult because I use one platform to collect all the money from when I sell courses and from my group coaching program, which I launched um, uh, this was like the first group coaching program that I launched since two years ago when I did more of those and I use a platform called Teachable. So that's why it's all lumped together because literally it's just kind of, it would take me a really long time to like separate the two things. But anyways, I just lump, lump them all together. So to give you a little bit of a breakdown, there was 1400 from March sales of my course, the Etsy listing photos course. And I also ran a flash sale where I sold my uh, Etsy Canva templates for 50% off. And I made about yeah 1400 from the March sales. And with Teachable, I chose to get paid once per month. So the March income arrived in April for me. Part of the money I made here was also two single coaching sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, and then the other money was from the group coaching program, the Creative Business Accelerator, which I got seven people in. Uh, some people paid in full, some people are on a five month payment plan. So if people are on the five month payment plan, then I'm going to keep receiving the money in the months to come. So I only would have received one month's payment in June. So with my course, the Etsy listing photos course and the t uh, Canva templates. So those, I don't really have a funnel. So I do actively have to sell it through my email list if I want to make money. Um, so March was when I did actively sell it. Uh, I would say from no October till February, I did run some sales for that. And that's where I made the money from the course. Um, I don't have a funnel, so that's something I'm going to work on because I do want to sell it like more consistently every single month without having to do like a flash sale or like a special deal every single month. Uh, so yeah, that's something I'm working on. Also, just one thing, I mentioned that I use the platform Teachable and I've used Teachable for many, many years, but I just recently decided to switch to another course platform called Thrivecart. And a big reason for that is that like my Teachable subscription, it would be, it would either be like around $50 per month or $120 I think per month if I don't want to pay any transaction fees. But this is like a monthly subscription and Thrivecart was $600, just a one-time payment with no monthly fees. And yeah, there were some other things that made me want to switch over to Thrivecart as well, but it was like mainly the, getting rid of the monthly software subscription fee. So I'm now slowly trying to move all my course content over to Thrivecart. And that I think is going to take a month. My next biggest income stream was YouTube AdSense and I made $8,471 Canadian from that. Compared to the last quarter 
um, this increased a little bit, but actually now it's going a little bit down because I haven't posted in more than a month. This is like my first video in six to seven weeks and I yeah, I can see like the income is going down. So this is in USD and I would say it's kind of actually pretty consistent, but I do feel like it's going down just because when I go to my um, analytics, oh, actually, okay. The revenue isn't going down, interesting, but my views, my watch time, and my subscriber account is going down. And I do think that's because I haven't posted in seven weeks, but I'm starting to post again, so let's see what happens. But yeah, YouTube AdSense has been pretty consistent for me for like a good one year and a half. So this was one year ago. It's kind of pretty consistent. And if I go to revenue, how much I'm earning every single month, it's kind of, it's kind of in the same ballpark every single month. So around like close to 2000, but not yet 2000, but some with over $2,000. So um, YouTube AdSense has been like a very consistent income stream for me. And my CPM, RPM is pretty high. RPM is 1258, that was last 365 days. Let's see, last 90 days, $13. Yeah, it's always around there. The next biggest income stream was brand deals income. And that was $3,657. So this quarter, my brand deals quieted down a lot. I did a lot less brand deals compared to the first quarter, which, uh, yeah, I made less money than before, but it's also good because I think at the beginning of the year, I was doing a lot of brand deals and I feel like my content was very sponsory and I was catering my content to the companies rather than my audience and, and what I personally wanted to make. So actually as of July 10th, I don't have any brand deals coming up, which is, I mean, it's okay. Like I I don't get the money from the brand deals, but I, I think it's like really good for my content because I get to just like do it however I want and make the content that I wanna make. Um, and that also gives me time to focus on my own products and like what I'm doing in my business rather than like promoting someone else's product. Oh, by the way, um, I wanna show you something. So since I don't have a sponsor for this video, I will be my own sponsor and uh, if you don't know already, I have a ton of free resources. So business plan templates, start your Etsy shop, checklists, YouTube stuff, UGC stuff, and a bunch of other things. So if you want all of these, you can go to this website, I'll link it below, and you can get all my free goodies. These are all the things that I made throughout the years to give to people for free. And you can sign up for that right here on my new website, which I don't think I'll go into detail in this video, but I do have a new website, which I'm pretty happy about. Um, it's like my own personal brand website. Okay, yeah, and I did like a little photo shoot. I'm really happy about these photos. Okay, the next biggest one was calligraphy income, and I made $3,002 from that. So those were from two private individual workshops, which were about $200 each. And then I did one super duper big corporate workshop where I made about uh, two, more than 2000. It was like a workshop with 30 people. So I had to, uh, or was it 60 people? No, I think it was 30 people. I had to mail out all the packages. Um, so yeah, that was just like one big company um, corporate workshop on Zoom and I made more than $2,000 from that. And that was at the beginning of April. Okay, my next biggest one is affiliate income. And I made $1,952 from that. I'm part of like, I would say 15 to 20 affiliate programs at this point, but it took me like three years to get to like these 20 affiliate programs. And out of the one out of the $1,952, the bulk of my income is from like two to three uh, affiliate programs. So even though I'm part of a lot of affiliate programs, I don't make money from most of them. Like every month it's usually $0 or maybe like $30 from most of them. 
the next biggest income stream, which is not really an income stream, it's my other income stream, which includes money back from the government for my tax return and um, like, like GST credits. Uh, I was part of a class action settlement, got a little bit of money from that. Oh, and then also some buy me a coffee. So I think there were like, I, th I think two or three people bought me a $5 coffee. So I kind of lumped it into the other income. So this income is like not really business income, but for me, it's like cash that, it's like extra cash for me to spend. So when I track my finances, uh, I do track it. Um, I, oh, I do have a bookkeeper who helps me with my actual business income. And um, yeah, like the stuff, like the, ta the money I got from the government that isn't included in that because obviously it's not business revenue. Okay, the next one is hangouts income, which um, it's not business income, but it is kind of a side gig I do. So there's someone in the community that I go hang out with around twice a month. And oh, how much did I make from that? I made uh, $1,240. Um, yeah, and I just take this person on some mini day trips. Next one is my dun, 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 Etsy income, which is eight hundred thirty seven dollars and um i know a lot of you follow me for my etsy stuff but the last three months my etsy shop has been just doing like okay i didn't really work on it i have like the same number of listings um and this is like pretty much passive income for me like i didn't touch it at all and i just made the sales but the sales did go down and like, I feel like I've worked on my Etsy shop for so long and I want to at least be able to maintain it. So I, now I am starting to post more things, a little bit more things. My goal is to post four new listings every single month. So hopefully I can get my Etsy income to, I would be really happy if it could make $500 a month. Cause right now it's doing like 100 to $300 a month. Okay. And the last one, which is like barely anything, uh, $25 was from gifts received. This was just like a gift from a friend. Let me show you the summary of what I made. So um, this, so I have a column for the total income, which some of it is not actual income because it includes a tax return, like hangouts income and some like miscellaneous stuff like gifts. This is business income. So I took this and I subtracted all those random income things that are not income. So in April, my business income was about 9,000 something, May 8,000 something, June 9,000 something, total was 26,000. My average was almost $9,000 Canadian um, for my business income. But from all the cash I collected, it was about $1,000 more in stuff. So this compared to the last time is pretty similar. Last time it was, let me see. Last time my average was um, 9,400. This was all my income. So if you subtract all the random stuff, that's not income. It's about the same. Um, yeah, around $8,000, $9,000 is what I make in my business for revenue pre-tax and it also includes GST, which I need to remit to the government. So my actual take home income is less than this. And this is revenue. I'll talk a little bit about expenses later, but yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this. It's coming close to the 10 K revenue goal that I have, but you know, this is still really good. And I feel like, cause I'm doing a lot in my business and I'm still, I feel like I'm still trying to figure out things. Okay. Let me go over my biggest expenses. Um, for my personal finances, I use something called lunch money. It's a website, uh, you do have to pay, I think it's about $10 a month, but I use this to track all my personal finances and my business finances. I do have a separate bookkeeper though, to do my actual business finances, but this is just for me to see like the money coming in and you can connect all your bank accounts. Um, they sync automatically. So it's like very convenient because you don't have to like manually type in everything. So for expenses, the biggest one was gas and transportation. And a bulk of this was I paid for one year of car insurance, uh, which was 
almost $2,000. Uh, the rest of it was my car payment, which is almost $600 a month, which I've had this car for about three years now. And it's not like I regret the car payment, but it's kind of an annoying car payment, but I do really love the car though. So I'm like, I expect to make a lot more money that in the future, like the $600 a month is not going to be that much for me. The next one was travel. So I spent $2,000 on that. I did some little trips and then I also prepaid for some Airbnbs. And then the next one is subscriptions, which I have a lot of, these are all like business subscriptions. Uh, you can see all my subscriptions here. Um, and yeah, that's it. All the other ones are kind of smaller expense categories. So one quick thing to note compared to last time, my subscriptions was about $4,000 and that's because I paid for a one year subscription of my, for my email software active campaign. Um, and obviously I don't have that in this quarter because I already paid the one year. So yeah, with like subscriptions, it can go up and down. My most expensive software subscription is the email list which by the way, if you want to join my email list, you can do it by going to here, getting all my goodies, then you'll be automatically added to my email list. So you'll notice that lunch money does track my income and this number 29809 isn't the same as this one 29739. That's because there's just a small discrepancy because lunch money will convert from USD to Canadian dollars. And I just did my own conversion for the sake of this graph that I wanted to show you, but it's not a big deal. So I made almost 30K, made almost 30K, but not all of it is business income. So around 28K is business income. I spent about 12K. And so my expenses were less than half of what I made. But remember, I will have to pay taxes and I also have to remit GST on the Canadian dollar revenue that I made. And I put some of the money into investments, which I have been using Wealthsimple for my personal investing for at least, I would say five years. I know this isn't like a money channel, but if you are interested and you're a Canadian resident, I highly do recommend Wealthsimple. They're not a sponsor. I like them. I put my money in there and I do have a link where you can get uh, I think it's 25 or $20 um, when you join. So you can check it out. So in my last income report, I did tell you what I'm planning to do in Q2. So now I'll tell you if I actually did the stuff, planning smaller digital products to sell. No, I didn't do that. I didn't post a YouTube video every two weeks. Um, I took like a seven week break. Uh, no, I didn't do more UGC stuff. I did work on my old Etsy shop. I didn't repackage my calligraphy business accelerator and uh, uh, calligraphy instructor academy course, but now I'm moving to Thrivecart, so I'm probably gonna repackage it. Uh, start on repurposing videos into blogs, kind of. So I have this new website, right? And I do have a blog there. And right now my VA is helping me repurpose some of my old YouTube videos into blog posts, so I'm kind of doing that. And then YouTube channel membership. Okay, I actually did start a YouTube channel membership. I posted one video and then after about a month, I deleted the channel membership because I just realized it's a lot more work to make more videos and then post it. And then there's like nobody watching it. So anyways, I got rid of it. <laughs> um, what about in the next quarter, Q3, what am I going to do? So I actually expect that I'm going to make, I'm not going to be making like 9K revenue. I expect to make five to 6K per month instead because I'm intentionally taking a pay cut so I can figure out what I'm doing in my business. I kind of, I felt stuck for a while and felt like not really growing and I'm kind of plateauing. So I want to take some time to just like be more creative. So one of the things I'm doing for fun is writing poems. And so basically I will write a poem for you with my calligraphy and I'll mail it to you. Um, so if you are interested in this, you can check it out. I'll put the link below to this. Um, this is just an, an experiment that I'm doing because I want to be more creative and not just do all like businessy things all the time. And I really do love calligraphy. I've been doing calligraphy since 2018. So I want to get back into doing more of it. So this is just like a fun way for me to connect with more of you and yeah, create some beautiful things, which I love doing. The, my mindset is like, 
I'm gonna take a pay cut now and the next three months not focus too much on making money. But I know that in these three months, as I be more creative, as I have more fun and make the content that I wanna make, I know that my audience will grow and then eventually I'll make more money. So I'm not too, too worried about it right now. Let me know in the comments if you like these income reports. Should I keep doing them or not? Uh, yeah, I just, it's always great to see feedback on videos because I'm, especially like for these income reports, I'm showing you a lot of behind the scenes of the money I'm making. So I feel like, I don't know if it's worth it for me to share all of this. I do think it is, but do let me know in the comments.